Thank you, Jesus. Would you open your Bibles with me? You all are looking really fine today, by the way. You guys are looking amazing. Amen. Thank you. I said at the service today, I said, when David said, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. He was really speaking about me because you can see the oil is still on my head. Amen. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to Romans chapter 12. We're going to look at two verses, verses 1 and 2. Amen. Amen. Are you guys leaving the front seat for the angels, Christine? Is that for the angels? Or? <laughs> Amen. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. I'm going to be reading from the New International Version. My Bible reads, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, this is your spiritual act of worship verse 2 do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good pleasing and perfect will father God we thank you for we are about to receive a word from you we thank you because, Lord, that which we shall receive shall not be stolen by the enemy. Lord, I declare that your word shall go forth as good seed and it shall find a root in good soil in the hearts of your people. That it will begin to transform our lives to begin to reflect or resemble that which you intended for us to have. Every obstacle that will stand in the way of your word being, being spoken today, I bind it in the name of Jesus. I open my spirit as a channel for you to speak through today and always, Lord God. And I also speak that your people's hearts be ready to receive your word. That your name be glorified and the transformation that we shall see. And a testament of your goodness shall be reflected in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I've titled today's sermon, Jigsaw Puzzle. Jigsaw Puzzle. It's a bit of an unusual title, but you guys know I like unusual things because I'm just an unusual man. Amen. I was on the bus traveling and, and the Lord gave me this title. It was on Friday. And on the bus, I began to write as the Lord was laying in my spirit and I began to write. And I believe that what I'm about to share with you today will truly bless somebody. It may not be for everybody, but whoever it is for, receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. I had to go to the dictionary to get the, the true meaning of the words jigsaw. Who knows what a jigsaw puzzle is? Who's ever attempted one? Amen. And the rest of you, you're from. Amen. Amen. I remember the first time I attempted that thing, I didn't know where to start from. I think it was like a hundred piece. And then I tried 500 pieces and I don't think I got beyond 500. <laughs> Amen. But the dictionary defines jigsaw to arrange intricately or to interlock. To arrange intricately or to interlock. And puzzle something such as a game, toy or problem that requires ingenuity and often persistence in solving or assembling. Amen. So we're talking about something that is already a picture that is intricate and interwoven in that it has been rambled or scrambled that it might be put together again amen and you know the things about jigsaw puzzles is that when you begin or when you want to begin to put them together you have to put all the pieces down and lay them down so you can see them and it looks very confusing very intimidating the first time you look at the puzzle you know, I was talking about Zuri who had puzzles. She went to school and they gave them puzzles to solve. And she just went, just did the puzzle very quickly. They had to give her the next one that was above her age. And she just went and did it. And the next one, 
and she just did them. Some people are just like that. And then we had a competition at home. She had four, four different sets of puzzles, and me, Viv, we're shameless. We're competing with Zuri and Izzy, and say, let's see who will be first to finish the puzzles. And Zuri, if she was the first, you know, she's you know, she so quick and easy. And V was last. That's my story. <laughs> Amen. But so, where whoever finished the first puzzle would, would swap round. So we each had a go at all four. But Zuri had an advantage because she had done the puzzle so many times, you know. But the, because those puzzles were not like very many pieces, it was easy for us to piece them together. But then when you move on to like 100 piece puzzles and 500 piece puzzles and 1,000 piece puzzles, then your mind begins to get really challenged because then you're no longer just looking at something that you can just look at and just put together. You now need to have a picture. Every puzzle, every jigsaw puzzle has a picture that tells you what it is you're about to undertake. It lets you know that this is what you should have by the time you finish putting all those pieces together. Now, most times we get confused because we want to start putting the pieces together without first looking at the picture but the bible says write the vision down make it plain so if you are to begin a puzzle you must first look at the picture what is the picture that god showed you about the thing that it is that you are putting together i say each and every one of us we have our own little puzzles like zuri we have our own puzzles that we must put together, piece them together. And most times, it is so easy to become short-sighted or be blinded and to think that your little puzzle that you're putting together is the whole picture. But what your puzzle is, is only a piece to go in a bigger puzzle. Amen. So we sit there and we're trying to put our puzzles together, trying to piece them together. And we get confused sometimes and we wonder whether we're doing the right thing. But if your piece is the head, then you know that by the time you finish your piece, what you should have is the head. And that is only a piece to go into the rest of the puzzle. Am I making sense? And as we put this puzzle together, we sometimes get confused. Who's ever tried to put a, a piece of puzzle in the, wrong, in the wrong place? Who's ever tried that? You are struggling. It looks like this is where it belongs. The shape is the same. And you're battling to put this thing in that space that you think it belongs to. And most times as we're forcing that thing, if you keep on forcing that piece into the wrong space, what's going to happen to that piece? It's going to get damaged. And every other piece that's around it is going to get damaged as well. So any sensible person, if you're trying to put this piece somewhere and it does not sit in where you're putting it you should say this piece does not belong here the thing about puzzles is that if you have the wrong pieces mixed in with the bunch the right bunch that you have then you have confusion now what many of us do not realize or do not understand is that god has a big picture so god took the picture first and then broke it into little pieces that we are now to put together. But there's somebody who also has his own picture. So God's picture is the original picture. God's puzzle is the original puzzle. And God is cut it very intricately and, and then all the pieces are scattered. But the devil knows what the picture of God is. Who knows that when God made the earth it was beautiful. The garden of Eden was beautiful. Everything was ready made for man. And all man had to do was to till it and just tend for it. So the devil comes, makes his own puzzle. But obviously he has God's picture. Because if you are to make a fake, you must have an original to work with. Amen. The dictionary defines original as ingenuity. Having no other preceding it. Something that does not did not exist before it is the first of its kind but a fake is a replica a copy of an original so you have fake money or counterfeit money but they don't make counterfeit money if you go and make counterfeit money without an original in your hand then something then you really have a fake brain so for you to copy an original you must have the or original at hand very closely and they will study there are some people who are just good at faking things 
I was watching this program one time. I think it's called Faking It. And this guy was, they, they taught him how to be a coach, a football coach. Now they have specific language that they use. They have specific hand gestures that they use. They have specific words that they will scream out to a player who's on the field. So they brought a group of people to try to pick the fake coach amongst these other ones but they had grilled this man to know how coaches think to know how they react and how they act on the pitch or around the pitch and the people who were to spot the fake were watching to see what this who the fake one was amongst all of them that were out there and this guy did so well but there was something that didn't quite gel his body language was not quite right Coaches are like, oh, what are you doing, Beckham? Get, get from oh, they are giving hand gestures and sides and don't. Oh, and the people understand that, but this guy, because he was not a natural football coach, didn't quite. He was a bit posh. He was a bit, you know, he didn't know what to do. Sometimes he just stood there and, and they would ask them questions. And the way he was answering, they said, this guy is trying too hard to impress us to let us know that he's the coach. So what I'm saying is, the devil has a replica. Of the picture that God has put together. The devil has his own jigsaw puzzle. It looks just like God's one. It looks just like the original. He's cut his pieces almost as closely to God's one as possible. And what he's done, he's mixed some of his pieces along with the master's one. Somebody says, I am a piece in the master's masterpiece. I am a piece. In the master's masterpiece. Now the truth is, as you recognize that you are a piece in the master's, there's only one master, his name is Jesus. If you are a piece in the master's masterpiece, there will be people around you who are original pieces. But there will also be some around you who will be fake. Now the truth is because the devil has really copied the master's picture. To the T that sometimes it is hard to identify what the fake one is. But say I'm the real deal. Say I am the real deal. Because you know who you are, you will not be confused about what table you belong to. Now the two masters are there trying to piece their things together. God's one is on the side. We are trying to piece our little pieces together. So we can have a complete piece that God can take and put in the big picture. The devil is on the side and sometimes as children of God, because we belong to the original piece, we get mixed up and we end up in the wrong piece. But you know that if you take two pictures with two different cameras and process them from two different printers, same picture but the coloring will be different. The texture will be different. So somebody might cut the pictures together and put them all together. But if you begin to put them together, you will know that this one does not belong to this frame. This picture does not belong in this frame. So as an original piece in the master's piece, as you begin to find that around you, there are certain colors that do not quite blend with yours. There are certain characteristics that do not quite fit with yours. Somebody has slotted you in this piece and you know that you do not quite fit in there because you're not really sitting as perfectly as you ought to sit. A child of God will say, you know what, I don't belong here. The Bible says, amongst my people are found wicked men. So the devil puts his people in the midst of God's people. And sometimes because as people of God, we... We grew up with the devil's own pieces. We begin to adapt to the devil's lifestyle as though it is the way we were supposed to have been raised. But the Bible says, St. Paul writing to the Roman Christian says, Be not conformed to this world. Because the picture that has been painted in this world is a picture that is contradictory to the picture of Almighty God. It looks nice, but it's not the master's piece. And we get confused. But you know that when the master is looking for the pieces that belong in his piece, he will find you if you call out to him. If that piece sits there and keeps quiet and says, well, after all, I know this is not where I belong, but I'm just going to stay here anyway. Well, the master just might let you be. But Jesus says, Father, of all that you gave me, I lost none except Judas, the son of perdition. 
you will not be lost in the mighty name of Jesus. Say to your neighbor, don't try to fit me anywhere. I belong to a different game. I cannot fit just anywhere because I am cut out to fit perfectly in a slot. When you put your jigsaw pause, when you put a piece where it belongs, it is effortless. You drop it and it just sits there. You don't have to push. You don't have to try. It is naturally fitted for that position. May you find where you belong in the name of Jesus. Amen. Another fact of the jigsaw puzzle, it looks a mess at the beginning. So sometimes we're trying to put things together and you're getting frustrated. Because depending on the number of jigsaw pieces that you have, the more the number, the more frustrated you would get. But if you don't stop, if you keep going, you will get to the end in Jesus' name. Every jigsaw puzzle is always harder at the beginning. But as you begin to put the pieces together, as you begin to put the pieces together, suddenly there is a confidence in you that rises up. There is a joy in your spirit because you say, this thing that I'm putting together is finally coming together. Amen. Another truth about the jigsaw puzzle is somebody has to put it together. Sometimes it is so easy for us to think that whatever we're doing is all that is, all there is in the picture. But all you are is just a jigsaw puzzle piece in a very big picture. And if we understand and adapt that mentality, if we have kingdom mentality, we can help one another. I went to preach at a church today. I didn't say to them, oh, I'm going to charge you 500 pounds to come. Sorry, 50,000 pounds to come. So I'll be charging the world in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm just prophesying my own, I'm telling you. So I didn't say, oh, this is what you have to I've gone to preach for people and given my offering there and left, they didn't give me a pound. I didn't go, my God, I drove my petrol, bought my air ticket. Why would I do that? Because I know that I am just a piece in a big jigsaw puzzle. That's why no matter where I go, I can give my offering if I believe that the place is of God. And I say the same to you, support ministries. Support churches, support men of God, support missions. Because if you do that bit and you help somebody to complete his piece, the bigger, the, the sooner we can all complete our little pieces, the sooner the master can have a perfect picture. Tom, stand to your neighbor and say, help the master. Help somebody else. Amen. And each piece, another truth about the jigsaw puzzle, each piece is vital in any puzzle. If any piece is missing out of that puzzle, it can cause frustration. So every piece is vital. Turn to your neighbor say, I am a vital piece in this masterpiece. You are vital and if you can understand and receive that you are vital, that you have a part to play, no matter where you find yourself, if you are in the body of Christ, don't say, well, I don't have any skills, I can't preach i can't sing you can dance you can arrange chairs there are things that we can do in the body of christ the bible says even the gift of giving it says giving is a gift did you know that god blesses some people all they want to do is give they give up their time give up themselves without question it's not a burden it's not a task with joy because god has given them a gift to give May that be your portion in the name of Jesus. Another truth about Jesus' portion is it is beautiful when it is finished. When it is completed, there's a joy that rests in your spirit. You just feel so good about what you've done. You look back at your work and say, yes, it was worth my time. They say, act well your part for there the honor lies. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 7 to 8. St. Paul was a man who understood that he was just a piece in the master's masterpiece. Therefore, everything that he did, he did it. That when his piece is complete, the master would pick his piece up and says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Amen. 
Where do you belong? The devil has a mist of the, master, the mist of the thing. So that what goes on in this side. You want to have sex with any woman? It is okay. You want to drink and get drunk? It is okay. You want to lie on your neighbor? That's fine. You want to steal? That's fine. So the peace that you are, a perfect peace. If from the puzzle of God, because you have mixed up with the wrong puzzle set, we now begin to pick up habits from that side that do not conform to the lifestyles that we are supposed to live. St. Paul says, be not conformed. Do not conform any longer because it meant that we were already living our lives the way the world had dictated for us to live. And that's not the way God meant for us to live. So it takes an expert to spot a fake. If they ask me to come and look at a Picasso work and, 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 and a fake one and tell, me which, tell them which one is real, I would not know the difference. If you ask me to taste sweet wine, you know, good wine or cheap wine, I would not know the difference. So there's no point telling me to taste the wine and tell you which one is high quality because sometimes the one I, I might think that, you know, you know what I mean? I might think that Schler is the, is the best one, is the most because it's sweet wine. I don't know the difference, but there are people they will just take that thing and smell it and go say, Oh, this one is this. This is cheap wine. So I say, Ah, oh, this one is 1927 from Italy. Yeah. This one is 19, this is November 1914. <laughs> but there's some people who are just trained to do those things. I'm not trained to do those things. But if you are to be an expert in that which God has called you into, you've got to know what the original is like. And the Bible tells us the Bible is the word that contains the original picture, the original pattern. That's why we must go back to the word. Amen. St. Paul says, 2 Timothy 2, 15. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You will need to study the word of God because if we study the word of God, then we know where we belong. I'm not confused about where I belong. Amen. We are in the body of Christ. And because we're in the body of Christ, we cannot conform any longer to the ways of the world. The devil is a liar. He can't trick us in the name of Jesus. Look at Acts 17, 11. St. Paul was writing about the Berean Christians. And St. Paul said that these ones, they were very noble. Because these people, they, they went home to check what they had received. Based on the word of God, on the word of God, so they could come back and receive even more. He says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily. How often did they search the scriptures? Daily. Daily, daily they searched the scriptures whether those things were so. So if I tell you something, you need to go home and check it with the word. If it doesn't align with the word of God, then you do not take it. Because pastor said, doesn't make it right. The word of God is yea and it is amen. It is the final authority by which all Christians must go. Viv and I were watching a program on TV. And this guy came out, he says, I am, I am a priest and I am gay. And he was so confident and so at ease and so at peace. And he says, well, I, you know, I pastor a church and, you know, um, and I'm thinking, do they live in a different world? Because the Bible is clear. I don't condemn them. We can't condemn them. But we condemn the act. If God says it is bad, then we must say that it is bad. But because many of these, these people, these pieces have mixed up with the wrong bunch. They have claimed or received what was being taught them, which are lies from the side of the enemy, that it is so. Whether it is homosexuality or fornication, it is sin. So you can't say, well, I'm not gay, but, but you know, I just like women, so I just go after women. That the Bible says that's a sin. Or stubbornness or disobedience or lie telling or drunkenness or cheating. Anything that you do that is not in line with the will of God is sin. So that's we, I know sometimes we just we focus on homosexuality, but it's not the only sin. The Bible says that the sin of wickedness is as the sin of witchcraft. You will not be deceived in the name of Jesus. You will not be deceived in the name of Jesus. And then we end up forming habits 
Who knows how easy it is to form a habit? Who knows? Who has habits that they formed and you just, you're struggling with it now? Little things. Sometimes it might be the way you talk, the way you, the way you walk, the things you say. If you do something daily, consistently becomes your habit. Some people when they eat, it's habits. That's why when our children are being raised, we teach them the proper way to do things. We teach them. Because if they form the habits, then it becomes a part of them. But St. Paul says, do not conform, but be transformed. To be transformed is to go beyond the form that exists. It says, and be transformed in the renewing. To renew means go back to the new. Go back to the way it was in the beginning. To renew something is not to make something from the, from the start. It's to take it back to its origin. So re is a prefix. So St. Paul says you need to renew your mind because the way you are thinking is not the way you're supposed to think. May we think right in the name of Jesus. Samuel Johnson says habits are chains that are too small to be felt until they are too big to be broken. That's what habits are. Chains that are too small to be felt until they are too big to be broken. We form the habits so just looking at women, just think, ooh, ooh. Then that just becomes your habit. Now to break this thing that you thought was harmless, suddenly becomes a mighty thorn in your flesh. It is easy not to start and to try to stop. Somebody says, if you think leaving me is easy, coming back is harder. If you think leaving me is easy, coming back is harder. So don't think the things that you think you can just do and get away with. To try to get back to where you were will take you longer than you thought. Blaise Pascal says, habit is the second nature which destroyed the first. That's what habit is. John Dryden says, we first make our habits and then our habits make us. Some people have habits that are so irritating and then they say, I want to stop. Look at cocaine addiction, drunkenness, smoking. When they started, you think they thought that they could, not, they, they could not stop if they wanted to stop? They say, well, I'm just going to smoke this. When I get tired, I can just drop it. Like it's that easy. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. You think you can just drop it like it's hot? You will be struggling with that thing. So it is easier not to start than to try to stop. Somebody says, act the way you want to be, and soon you will be the way you act. Because you and your actions are one and the same. So when we're trying to get transformed, we're trying to come out of the devil's puzzle into God's puzzle. Because we are the original piece. We just got mixed up with a bad bunch. And God is so faithful because he does not condemn us. He says, just go and sin no more. Tell a neighbor, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Hallelujah. The beauty of every puzzle is when each piece sits where it ought to sit. There is a sense of comfort. When you are where you belong, there is nothing as beautiful as as that. When you find where you belong. Some people just love children. Rachel loves children. She says she's going to have 12. Just love children. I'm prophesying over you, Rachel. (laughs) Loves children. I went to play golf with this guy and he says, I know some men are saying, well, I don't want to marry Richard. She wants to have 12 children. This guy, I said, how many children have you got? He says, I've got seven children. I said, what? He said, yeah, I've got seven. He said, six of mine and one is my sister's child. I said, man, the Lord's grace is sufficient for you. Some people just, I I, I can't deal with that. Amen. I can deal with that. Hallelujah. I said, do you know why the king's men could not put, who knows that poem, Humpty Dumpty? Can we say it together? Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty Dumpty together again. I was embarrassed, is he? You don't know. You didn't go to primary school. How did you get into Openton College? (laughs) And then I say, this is mine. I said, why could the why there are two reasons why they could not put Humpty Dumpty back together again the first one I say is they did not have all his pieces 
all the broken pieces of Humpty Dumpty, they could not find them all. When you break something and you want to put that thing back together, what you must do is find every piece. That's why there's like a murder scene. What the people, do you see the policemen, they're all lined up. Hand and hands and knees. Thank you, Rachel. You are quick. <laughs> I would have stayed there for half an hour trying to think about it. Hands and knees. And they are just painstaking. Pain, why are they doing that? Because for them to be able to solve that murder, they need every single piece that they can find. So they're struggling just finding it very painstakingly. See, every piece in a puzzle is needed. Every piece in a puzzle is needed. So the reason they could not put Humpty Dumpty together, this is mine. So don't go and say, well, that's the reason. Just say, that's what my pastor said. Amen. I want everybody phone me and say, why did you get that? Amen. They could not find all of his pieces. The second reason I heard from a song, so I can't claim the credit for that, was B.B. Wynan. See, the reason they could not put Humpty Dumpty together again was because they took him to the wrong king's man. If they are taking him to the king of kings, they would have put him together. If they are taking him to the king of kings, men, they would have put him together. If they had brought him to you, would you have been able to put him together? Hallelujah. So we worry sometimes about the things that we've gone through in life, about the brokenness that we've had. But everything that is broken in your life, they're all pieces that you must put together. For God wants to paint a beautiful picture with all the brokenness in your life in the name of Jesus. Your hurt, your anger, your disappointment, your best friend betrayed you, somebody stabbed you, your friend walked out on you. All of those things that went on in your life, all those brokenness. Somebody said, I can mend this broken heart if I can find every piece. I can mend this broken heart. Find the pieces. Tell a neighbor, find the pieces. Find the pieces. Find the pieces. Every piece is crucial. Every piece is vital. Every piece is necessary. And you are a vital piece in this masterpiece. John Wesley says, In the greatest temptation, a single look to Christ and the bare pronouncing of his name suffices to overcome the wicked one. So it be done with calmness and confidence of spirit. When you have gone to the wrong side, when you have been misled to the other side, made you to think that where you are is where you belong, you know that if you, they put you in that frame, you do not quite fit it. And your color is different because it is not the original picture. When you identify that, you must say, Jesus, I made a mistake. I went to the wrong side. Pick me, Lord, I'm over here. Pick me up, I'm over here. And he will come and say, yes, son, I see you, I pick you. The Bible says, no man can come unto the Father unless, no man can come unto me, said Jesus, unless the Father draws him. How can the Father draw you? He can only draw you because he knew that he made you not to belong in the wrong pack. That's how he can draw you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Charles Simeon says, one of the most fundamental marks of true repentance is a disposition to see our sins as God sees them. You cannot justify your sins. Oh, well, that's, that's the only sin I have. After all, the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we have quotations to back up the things that we do. Somebody was so ignorant. And she says, well, the Bible says that, you know, children will be disobedient to their, to their parents. So I'm just fulfilling part of scripture. I said, you fool. Why should you fulfill the part of scripture that, that, that requires punishment or that, that would bring punishment on you? I want to fulfill the part of scripture that brings glory to the Father. May that be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. So what do you do? Once you identify that you are in the wrong pack, that you are on the wrong table, you are in the wrong jigsaw piece, you call out to Jesus and he will take you out. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6 verse 17, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Whatever is unclean, he says, if you identify that you're in the wrong place, come out. The group that you're hanging with that you think you want to fit into, you think you want to be cool to be seen with them, he says, come out and I will receive you. This world is a jigsaw puzzle. The Bible says two cannot go together except they agree. 
So you cannot go and be mixing with things and people that do not have the same raising as you. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that if I had, if I had hair in the center of my head, it would be a very ugly sight. I was showing Steve a picture of me when I had hair and the man laughed. But I said, well, Steve, if, if your hair is what hair looks like, then I'm glad I don't have any. <laughs> Amen. So when something does not belong, when something is out of place, it stands out like a sore thumb. So if you are a child of God and you are mixing in the wrong pack, you will stand out because you do not belong. May you be wise in the name of Jesus Christ. All has bowed, all has closed, nobody looking around. I don't know who I've spoken to today. I hope that I've made some sense to you. But if you are in the service and you have not given your life to Christ, and you just identify that you are an original piece of Jesus' puzzle, However, you made a mistake and you got mixed up with the wrong bunch. And you want to be picked out and placed in the proper place where you belong. Because when the two pieces are put together and they are finished, one of them is going to be placed in heaven. And the other puzzle is going to be burned. Now every piece that's in the wrong puzzle is going to get burned in the fire. But the pieces that are in the master's piece. But we put in heaven to live in glory. And I'm making that invitation to you right now. If you're in the service and you have not given your life to Christ. If you have not made that commitment and you've identified that you are an original piece. But you were in the wrong place. Would you put your hand up? Thank you Jesus. Is there anyone else in the service? Anyone else in the service? Anyone else in the service who's given their life to Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Would you come forward? Amen. Please appreciate him as he comes forward. This is where it begins. Sometimes I wish that I had the opportunity to give my life to Christ as a boy. But I was in the... I just didn't... Nobody gave me the opportunity to do this. And sometimes we can think, oh, well, he doesn't know. Well, he knows. Because Jesus has already put it in him. And no matter where this child goes, in the name of Jesus, his color will stand him out. The favor of God will stand him out. Because he now belongs to the side of the master, Jesus. So he, even if he gets mixed up, don't worry. He will come back home. In the name of Jesus. Just put your right hand on your chest. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. And the only way to God. I acknowledge that I'm yours and I come to you now. Take me, Lord. Use me, Lord. I break every covenant of evil and I declare that Jesus, you're my Lord. You're my Savior. From this day henceforth, I dedicate my life to you. I am yours forever. Thank you, Jesus, because my name is written in the book of life in Jesus name amen I'm going to pray for you Father God I want to thank you for my brother I want to thank you for your son Lord God I know that he has heard your voice today that's why he has come and Lord he has not come to man not to a church but he has come to you so Lord I ask you that you will keep your eyes on this one assign your angels to this one make this one a delight in the mighty name of Jesus as he's come as tender as he is you say suffer I suffer not little children not to come unto me suffer them not to come unto me so as he has come unto you I know you will not turn him away Lord begin to use him now begin to place your mark on him Holy Spirit of God feel and overflow this child the Lord he will do great exploits for you in the mighty name of Jesus Lord I declare he will not miss his mark on earth this one is a leader amongst leaders he will shine as brightly as the stars wherever he goes oh God this one will be a leader amongst leaders in the mighty name of Jesus his generation will celebrate him and the generations beyond him in the mighty name of Jesus every child that shall be born to him we call them into the kingdom and from this day henceforth his bloodline is attached to you Lord Jesus therefore every benefit of your blood release them unto him guard him God is every move in the mighty name of Jesus grant him victory in every areas of his life in Jesus mighty name we pray 
Amen. Praise God. Bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Were you blessed by the word? Amen. 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 To those of you listening to this message, I hope that it has been a blessing to you. If it has, we would love to hear from you. In fact, let me use this opportunity to personally invite you to come and worship with us. And I guarantee you, it will be an experience that you will treasure for the rest of your life. We really would love to hear from you. Why don't you log on to our website, www.hfc-church.org. Take care and God.